Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and in today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate several techniques that you could use when you want to create a summary report from an Excel table or an Excel range. Now I have one viewer in mind as I create this lesson. The viewer wrote to me and said, Danny, management needs a, a, a summary report periodically during the month. However, they refuse to allow me to use a pivot table to create the report. Can you help me? Well, let's examine the data. So we have fields for date, customer, unit shipped, and invoice total. Let's see how many records we have. If I use the keyboard shortcut control and the down arrow, it's going to take me down to the last row that contains data. So we have 4,309 records and one row which contains the headers. So first order of business from the customer field, we need to be able to extract the list of the unique customer values. One way to do that is to go to the Data tab on the ribbon and over here in the Sort and Filter group choose Advanced Filter. Now from the Advanced Filter what we want to do is we want to be able to extract this list. So we want to copy it to another location, the Unique Records Only. Now you may have automatically the entire data range selected. So in this case what we want to do for our list range is we want to select only column B. Now the important gotcha step here is remember that when you're going to extract unique records from a field, begin by selecting the field header for that column. Then hold down Control, Shift, and down arrow to take you down to that last row. Because we're selecting or extracting unique records only from one field, we do not need to supply criteria range. Now where do we want to copy it to? I want to copy it to the first uh, row in column F. So I'll just type in there F1. And now when I click OK, there you go. I'll move the cursor up here. So I've now used the advanced filter to be able to extract from column B a list which is sorted in the sequence that they appear in the list. All right, now what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to provide a summary. Before I do that, what I recommend that you do is over here in your data range, first convert it to an Excel 2007 table, an Excel 2010 table. If you're using Excel 2003 or earlier, convert it to a list. So with one cell selected in the original data set, come up here to insert and say insert a table. Notice that there's also a keyboard shortcut, Control T. So now what you do when you click OK, of course you get a shading over here, which I'm going to change on the Table Tools, which is a contextual tab on the ribbon. On the Design Gallery, I'm going to select a more moderate range for my table. All right, now that we have that, one of the main advantages of the table, remember presently we have 4,000 and 310 records. But this data set will grow, as my viewer has said. So when you create a table or an Excel 2003, convert a range to a list, as you append records, then your definitions for your formulas will automatically expand. All right, next step is that I want to be able to create named ranges for the customer field and for the invoice total. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by selecting, including the label, and use Control shift down arrow So now, I've, again, I've selected all of the values in the customer field, and I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut, Control shift function 3 to open up the Create Names from the selection. So the label that I'm going to use is in the top row. It's called Customer. So my name range is going to be called Customer. As you'll see if I come over here to the Name Range box, and there it is. There's the Customer field. So I base the name of this field on the Customer field level. I'll do the same thing over here for the Invoice Total. Control Shift Down, and I want to be able to use Control Shift F3 to open up Create Names from the Selection once again from the label that's in the top row. Click OK. And let's again test out. So the name ranges that I've created, customer, which you just saw, and from the name drop-down, invoice total. All right, now I'm going to use them in the sum if function. So I'm going to put over here a label, call it total. Let's call this average. And let's call this count. 
All right, now I want to be able to copy over the formatting. An easy way to do that is to right mouse click, use your format paintbrush, and then click over here to copy the formatting. All right, let's use the sum if function. So equals sum if, and I like to use the function wizard dialog box. So at this point, I either click this button up here, the insert function to open up the wizard or control A to open up the function arguments dialog box. All right, we want to be able to summarize the sales for only the ABC company. That's why we're using sum if. The range that we're going to look in is going to be that name range called customer. So after you've named a range, if you use the F3 keyboard shortcut, then it opens up all of the names that we've created in this worksheet. So in this case, it's the a, uh, the customer field label uh, field, and the criteria that I want to look for in the customer field is for this customer. Now, when I find the records for the ABC company, then what do I want to sum? I want to sum the invoice total. So F3 brings up that range. So the invoice total over there, click OK, and now click OK. Now let's do some formatting over here. Let's again right mouse click. Uh, I want to use the currency symbol with zero decimal places. So now I can simply copy this down. So now I have a nice sum for each of the customers. I first extracted the unique customer names using the advanced data filter. Then I use the sum if function. So I looked inside a range and I had already named that range customer to find the records that meet this criteria. They are the value which I have over here in F2, the ABC company, or in F3, the uh, EZ uh, electronics. And then notice optionally that the third argument is that when you find those customers in that range, what do you want to do? So I want to sum the range over here for the invoice total. All right, now I want to use average if. Now, if you've been following along and you're using Excel 2003, average if is not a function that you have available. Average if was introduced in Excel 2003. Uh, seven. Nevertheless, I'll show you how we can produce an average later on in the lesson. So similar, I'm going to type equals average if, and I can use the function autocomplete when I come down to the function. Press the tab key, and I'll use control A. Once again, the range that I want to look for is in the customer range. F3 brings up the dialog box. So I select customer, and then uh, the criteria that I want to match, I want to match the individual customer name. And then what do I want to average? Well, I want to average the invoice total. And again, remember that's a named range. So F3 brings that up, the invoice total. Click OK click OK and there you go. Let's copy over the formatting so again I use the format paintbrush and now I'll use the autofill to copy down the average if to each of the customers. We also have count if which is slightly different so equals count if and I'll use control A. Now notice that with count if there is there are only two required arguments. There is not a third argument. So once again, we want to look inside the name range customer, use F3 customer, and then what Matt criteria. I want to look for how many times the ABC company, in this case, appears in that data range, 925. Autofill down, and again, let's use the uh, thousand separator zero decimal places. Now I mentioned that average if was introduced in Excel 2007. So if you're using Excel 2003 and you want to follow along, you're able to do count if, you're able to do sum if, but if you wanted to be able to get the average, all you'd have to do is, I'll put in here uh, Excel, what you would do is create a formula that would take equals the total, which we use sum if for, divided by the uh, count if. So there you're going to get the same number. So there is your average. And again, we can copy over the formatting with the format paintbrush. And now that we have that formula up here, let's use the autofill to copy it down. 
All right, so there you've seen how to use the uh, data uh, tab on the ribbon, the advanced filter to be able to extract a list of unique names. Now, in this case, and, and people who have done this before will say, Danny, you know, the problem is when I go to extract the names, uh, I, it's saying I can't put it on another worksheet. Yes, you can. There is a trick. So in this case, I want to begin on a worksheet where I want to create my report. So just have a blank worksheet over here and begin over here in cell A1. Doesn't matter which one. Once again, come over here to data over in sort and filter. In the advanced filter, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're copying to another location. All right, the list range, remember, is on another worksheet. So let's close this, uh, minimize this down to come over here to the original data. Remember that when you are extracting a list of unique names, begin with your first cell in the selection as the field header. And then I use Control Shift Down Arrow. Now let's expand that. And then we don't need criteria. Where we want to copy it to is on this new worksheet, Extract in cell A1 the unique records only. Click OK. So you see the trick is that if you begin over here where you have your data and say extract it to another worksheet, it will give you an error message. The trick here is to begin on the worksheet, and in this case a blank worksheet, where you want to have the data extracted to and then open up the data advanced and then follow the steps copy it to a different location, unique records only. And again, remember my trick when you're extracting uh, unique records or any other field, make sure that you select the field label. And then you've learned how to use the sum if function, the average if function, which is only available in Excel 2007, 2010, and the count if function. Very valuable for producing neat summary reports. And it's typical of the tips that I offer in my DVD-ROM series, the 50 best tips for Excel 2007. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.